get people interested and find out what's going on. Tonight, we're going to talk about the people. What people? You'll find out. Praise God. You see, if we're talking about the last days, we've got to cover a lot of subjects, a lot of different things. So I want to talk not only about the things that are happening uh, that are that are kind of like, you know, really uh, the evil side, you know, the satanic side, the powers and principalities and the tribulation. I don't want to just talk about that because we have to have hope. We always have to have hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. And the best way to get hope is to really understand what the Bible is telling us about who we are, what we're to do, and how Jesus is working with us in the last days. So I'm going to say a prayer. If you join with me, I appreciate it. Father, in Jesus' name, we come together. We ask you to bless this evening. Let your Holy Spirit be with us. And we thank you, Lord, for working in our lives tonight. Amen. Amen. Now, you might want to grab a, uh, a notebook, a pencil, a pad, something. You know, get your Bible out and work with me on this so that you know what's going on and what's happening and where we are, what we're doing. Because tonight we're going to go into the Old Testament, and I'll try to give you the scriptures as we're going along. First scripture is Daniel chapter 7, verse 27, okay? Daniel 7, verse 27. And here's what it says. It's, it's an important scripture to understand. So let me put it here for you, for those of you who can't get your scriptures out right away. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. This is a really important scripture here because Daniel is, remember, he's been seeing visions. He has uh, an angel, uh, Gabriel sometimes, explaining things to him. You know, it's a funny thing about, you know, some people, they think, well, I had a vision from God, and they understand the whole thing. Well, you know, Daniel had visions, but you know what? He needed an angel to explain it to him because he couldn't figure it out. Hallelujah. So sometimes you might see something, but you really don't know what it is, even though you think you know. But anyway, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Anyway, the kingdom and dominion. This is talking about power, authority. This is talking about the kingdom of God. And we're going to bring this from Old Testament to New Testament. Now, remember, every scripture in the Old Testament that has not been fulfilled already is basically pointing us towards the church now. Because the church is new Israel. The church is, as Paul says, true Israel. Okay? As we are in Christ now, we are the ones that are being talked about in Scripture in many ways. Now, I'm not saying that God doesn't have a plan for Israel. I'm not saying that God's forgotten Israel. No, God forbid. The same thing Paul had to talk about. He said, you know, God has not forgotten his people for Abraham's sake, for David's sake. But there's a difference between the way that things are working with them and things are working in the church, okay? So here we go again. Daniel 7, 27. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven. So he's talking about something that goes up into the heavenly realms. It goes, all, it goes far beyond planet Earth, okay? So uh, we're going we're gonna to look at who are the people of the saints of the Most High. That's what the, tonight's all about. It's about the people. Who are the people? What the prophet is saying is that there's going to be a people within the saints of the Most High. He says, there shall, uh, that there, it, the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of it shall be given to who? To the people of the saints of the Most High. There's two phrases in there, of the saints of the Most High. But it's the people of the saints of the Most High. So who is he talking about? This is a people within another people. Okay? And they're the ones that are going to be given the kingdom and dominion. The kingdom and dominion does not go to the saints of the Most High. No, it goes to the people of the saints of the Most High. So what we're talking about here, Daniel is talking about a remnant. He's talking about of all the saints of the Most High. Now you're talking about Old Testament saints, New Testament saints. Of all the saints of the Most High, there's going to be a people within that people, and that people is going to be given dominion and the kingdom and everything under heaven. It's a remnant he's talking about. He's talking about the remnant of God. Amen? And so, you know, when we talk about the remnant of God, we have to get to understand, you know, what is going on there. You know, what, what's really happening. So I want to explain to you a little bit, try to give you some understanding and some wisdom in this, okay? All right, now, in understanding a people who's a remnant, a people within a people, within the saints of the Most High, 
this remnant could be called overcomers. Okay? They go through things and they overcome. All right? Now, the best way I can explain this is by showing you an image here. And it is a wheel within a wheel. I want you to think of the people of the saints as a wheel within a wheel. Now, remember Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 16. And let me grab this up here for you right now, okay? Ezekiel 1, 16. Uh, let's see. I got to do a bunch of little things here. Ezekiel 1, 16. What does it say? It says that the appearance of the wheels and their work. He's seeing, he's seeing cherubim in what we would call a fiery chariot, let's say. He's seeing a cherubim, and he's saying, the appearance of their wheels and the work was like the color of beryl. And each one of the four had a likeness. And their appearance and their work were, as it were, a wheel within a wheel. Okay? So let's look at a wheel within a wheel. Okay, let's go back here to the bicycle for a second, all right? Here's a wheel within a wheel. The wheel within the wheel. I want you to look at the bicycle, okay? The bicycle has a hub, okay? It has a hub in the center, and then it has spokes going out from the hub to the tire on the rim. So there's a wheel, the hub, within a wheel, the tire on the rim, okay? Now keep this image in your mind. The wheel within the wheel, the tire and the, and the hub, okay? Now, all right, let's see. It's easy to understand this if we look at it this way. Now, the hub is the most important part of the entire wheel. It's a wheel within itself. Of itself, it's a wheel. It's, it's, it's like if you think of Christ and the church, and he's the headstone, he's the head, we are in Christ, but it's all Him. He is the most important part of the whole body, right? So the hub is the part of the whole entire wheel that is actually more important because the spokes come out of the hub. This is the power, the anointing, all the different things you can relate these spokes to. They come out of the, of the hub and then they connect to the tire, to the outer tire on the rim, okay? They connect to the outer tire on the rim. Now, the hub is so valuable and so important because by itself it's a wheel. You see, the tire is not a wheel of itself. The tire is not a wheel without a hub and spokes. It has to have the hub with the spokes coming out of it, otherwise it's not really a tire. It's just a piece of rubber, you know, kind of flat and crooked or something like that. So we have to look at this as a wheel within a wheel in the right measure, in the right manner, okay? So, let's take a look at that, all right? People of the saints of the Most High are the hub. The people within the people is the hub within the wheel. They're the ones that are the concentrated aspect. They're smaller, but they move a much greater force. The tire with the rim is bigger. They're the small part. They're the remnant. They're the people within the people of the saints of the Most High. But they're the ones that make the tire a tire. Without the hub, it's not a tire. It's just metal and rubber because it won't have shape and form. It won't roll. It needs the hub. And, the, and that's the truth everywhere, okay? Now, what I'm talking about here is a truth that's in every church around the world. There's always a hub in every church, or what we would say most of the time is a core. There's a core group of people in every church who basically are the ones who are doing everything. Everybody else is there, and they're in part of the church, they're a part of the body, and they enjoy it, and they receive from it, and they give to it, and they support it, and they're all one in Christ. But without that core group of people, the church is going to fall apart. Yeah, and we all know that. That's true everywhere. That's true in most businesses. That's true in, in, in families. You know, it always takes one person in the family to keep the family together. They're the core. They're the hub. Okay, the family is the wheel. But there's always somebody. It could be mama. It could be nana, grandpa, grandma. It could be a sister or a brother. It could be somebody. But somebody's keeping the family together. Now, why is it so important to understand this wheel within the wheel? 
Why is it important to understand that it's the people of the saints or within the saints? They're the ones that get the kingdom and the dominion. I'm going to show you because this is what's playing out in the last days. The core people within the body of Christ, the remnant, they're the ones that are called to walk in power, dominion, authority. They're the ones that are going to be given the kingdom and the dominion. But remember, many are called, but few are chosen. So people go around all the time, I'm an overcomer, I'm an overcomer, and they haven't even overcome cigarettes yet. I'm an overcomer, they can't overcome their mouth. I'm an overcomer, they can't overcome the different things in life. They're still filled with pride, they're still filled with other things, you know. And uh, then you got those ones that have that, you know, false humility. Well, praise God, I'm so proud, I'm an overcomer. You know, but they haven't even overcome that false humility yet. So you understand what I'm saying, all right? Let's go to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1 through 10. So this is going to be a few scriptures to read together, all right? Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. And we're going to look at this for a special reason. Now, for this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which has been given to me for you. So Paul is saying, number one, he's saying, look, I have been given the dispensation of the grace of God for you. Paul is basically saying, I'm like a hub, and I've got spokes for you. I've got a dispensation of grace for you, okay? Now, by the revelation that was known unto me, the mystery, as I wrote before in a few words, and if you read it, you'll understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. It's not the mystery of Jesus. It's the mystery of Christ, okay? The difference there. We know Jesus as our Savior, but the Bible says that in the last days that the kingdoms of the world will become the kingdoms of our Lord, who's our Lord? Jesus, and of his Christ, okay? So what is his Christ? This is what we're getting at tonight, all right? His Christ. Now, in other ages, it was not made known unto to the sons of men, but now it's been revealed to his holy apostles and his prophets by the Spirit that the Gentiles are fellow heirs now of the same body and partakers of the promise of the gospel. So Jew and Gentile are now one. With It's like male and female. Which is more important to God now? Neither one. They're both important because in Christ, neither male nor female counts, okay? In Christ, neither Jew nor Greek matters. So we have a whole new revelation that we have to understand. And he says, and I am a minister by the grace of God working in me by his power that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Now again, he doesn't say the unsearchable riches of Jesus. He's saying the unsearchable riches of Christ. There's something special. When you think of this, and, and, and I'm not putting Jesus in any low position. Jesus is the head of the body. He created all things. All things were made for him and through him. So everything belongs to him. It's all Christ. It's not us. We are sharing in that, and we're blessed to be a part of that. So he's preaching the unsearchable riches of Christ because this is the mystery, he says. There's a mystery I'm going to talk about. It's the mystery of Christ. And you've got to understand this. And tonight I want to talk to you about this mystery of Christ. This is the people, okay? This is the wheel within the wheel. This is what God is doing. He wants to make all men see the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world was hidden in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent. Now, here's the purpose. The mystery of Christ has a purpose. And the purpose is that unto the principalities, and the powers in the heavenly places, she's talking about the fallen ones, not the good angels, not the good powers and principalities, the cherubim that are with God in the heavens, above the heavens. He's talking about the second heavens where Satan and his dominions, his minions are, okay? To the intent that now unto the principalities and the powers in heavenly places might be known through the church what is the manifold wisdom of God. God is displaying his manifold wisdom to all creation. How's he doing it? Through the church. Okay? This is his plan. The Lord wants to demonstrate through the church to the powers and principalities his manifold wisdom. So, let's go back into this now and go a little bit deeper and dig into this. There's somebody in the Bible that was a radical. Uh, and, and, and everybody's got to basically agree, of all the prophets, he's like 
one of the most radical prophets there was, John the Baptist, okay? And you might say Elijah was a radical prophet. He was. But you know what? John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah. So he's got a radicalness to him too. John the Baptist had a mission. And his mission was to what? Prepare the way of the Lord. He had to get things ready. The, Jesus said he was, the, he was the, the best man. Jesus was the groom and he was the best man. The best man gets everything ready for the groom. Okay? And that's what John the Baptist did. He, and of all people born among women uh, in, in, in the Old Testament, in Israel, none were greater than John the Baptist because his mission was to prepare the way for Jesus to be manifested. Okay? So, Matthew chapter 3, 1 through 3. And, and most of you would have this scripture. You'd know pretty much what it says, but I'll put it over here also. Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now just a little aside here for those of you who would like to know more about the Essenes, where John the Baptist was baptizing in the wilderness of Judea was only a stone's throw from the Essene community because John the Baptist was the, the leader of the school of the prophets in the Essene community, which was the remnant of their day. Okay, and, and more about that, of course, in the future. So now this is what I believe. And you may disagree with me, but that's okay. But I believe this. I believe that just as John the Baptist came to prepare the way for the first coming of Jesus Christ, the first coming, he prepared the way. I believe that in the last days, there will be a corporate John the Baptist company that is going to prepare the way for the return of Jesus, for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Because God is doing something in a corporate manner now. He's doing something in the body of Christ now. He's not just doing things with one person. There have been great evangelists and ministers, and there's always been people that have really been used of God, but God is interested in building up a people now. It is going to be a people that receives the kingdom and dominion, not a person, a people. So I believe there's going to be a John the Baptist company, if you would, and this is what we see. A John the Baptist company. John the Baptist, the fiery evangelist preparing the way of the Lord, and a company, like a troop of soldiers who are there. They're seeking God. They're praying. They are the troop. They're the army, the modern-day army of God. They are the company, like a military company of men, soldiers, men and women of, 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 of an army who are soldiers, and they have a mission, and they're on their mission, and they won't stop till the mission is accomplished. I believe we're going to see in these last days a John the Baptist company. It's amazing what God is doing. A John the Baptist company. All right, now, he wants to show his wisdom through this company. And how's he doing that? Well, this company are overcomers. They're not just, you know, members of the body of Christ. They're soldiers in the army of the Lord. Okay? They, they, have, they have come under discipline. They have decided that it takes more than a, a Sunday and a Wednesday, maybe, to really serve the Lord. They're not interested in just, you know, going to church and feeling good and saying, God's going to bless me and take care of me. No, they're saying, I've got a mission. I've got to prepare this world or my neighborhood, my family, my friends, the people in my sphere of influence. I've got to prepare them for the second coming of Jesus. Preparation. I've got to prepare them. This company, this John the Baptist company, will be a company of overcomers. They will not be wimps. They will not be afraid. They will be warriors. Even if they experience fear and trepidation, they will move on with courage. Courage is action in the face of fear. And that's who they are. They are the wheel within the wheel. They're the hub. They're the core of the body of Christ. They are the ones that Daniel said will be called the people of the saints of the Most High, the people within the people. So in these last days, 
God is not looking to raise up a superstar. He's not looking for one man or one woman of God to raise them up and prepare the way of the Lord for Jesus' coming. No, he's looking to raise up a company of people, a body of believers, a remnant in the last days, a group of overcomers. He's going to bring them up. And this is a corporate man. They will act as one. They will be in unity. They will know one another by the Spirit, not by the flesh. Paul said, from this point on, I know no man after the flesh, only by the Spirit. In other words, he says, I'm walking in a spirit of revelation, and now I know who I'm joined to. My wife received a, a vision years ago, and it, she's been talking about it for a while now. She said, there's coming a day when you're not going to know who people are. And that's why we need the spirit of discernment. You see, in the last days, Ezekiel's army is coming together, bone finding bone, joints coming together, skin and sinews and muscle coming together, and then the breath of God coming in there. So let's look at this corporate people. This is going to be a generation, a generation. What do I mean? Well, we've got generation X, generation Y, generation Z. We've got the uh, the old generation. We've got the the... The, the, you know, the, all these different generations. But there's a generation that's going to be used of God. Psalm 110, verses 1 through 3. Okay, let me get this up here for you on the chat. Psalm 110, verses 1 through 3. Okay? He says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand. Now, who's the Lord? That's the Lord. That's capitalized. If you look in your Bible, that's capitalized. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That means it's Jehovah. In the, in the Old Testament. The Lord said to my Lord, and who was David's Lord? Jesus Christ. Okay? He's the Lord of Lords. He said, sit at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. The Lord shall send thy rod of thy strength out of Zion. Zion is always talking about a people. It's talking about a people within a people. It's talking about a people within Jerusalem. Zion is the peak in Jerusalem. And that's what, there's all this imagery in the Bible here. He says, the rod of thy strength. You will rule in the midst of your enemies. The people, thy people, excuse me, thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Hallelujah. In the beauty of holiness, in the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. There's an anointing that's coming upon a people. They are his people, and they are going to be willing to do the work of the Lord. This is what he's talking about. Now, Peter picks up on this in the book of Acts, when he preaches his sermon, and he says in Acts chapter 2, verses 32 to 35. Let me give you that over here. Acts chapter 2, verses 32 to 35. And this Jesus God has raised up, whereof we are all witnesses, and therefore being by the right hand of God exalted in having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, which he has shed forth among us, which you now see and hear. For David is not ascended into heavens. He himself said, The Lord God, Jehovah, said to my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. So Peter quotes Psalm 110 and says, David's not talking about himself. David's talking about the Lord, the Messiah. And now, just in the next chapter, in Acts chapter 2, verse 21, chapter 3, excuse me, Acts chapter 3, verse 21, Peter says this, For he must remain in heaven until the time of the final restoration of all things spoken by the prophets. What's he saying? He's saying, first he says, the Lord must remain in heaven. He must stay in heaven until his enemies become his footstool. And that is going to be at the final restoration of all the things spoken out of the mouth of his holy prophets. Hallelujah. So in the last days, <clears throat> the Lord is going to do a great work in a group of people before he returns. And that group of people is the people of the saints, the wheel within the wheel, the overcomers in the body of Christ. I could go on with more, the sons of God. They are a people. And they're the ones who are going to bring about the restoration of all things spoken of by the prophets. They are, <coughs> excuse me, being prepared to do that. 
they are being prepared to prepare the way. You're going through hard times. You're going through trials and tribulations. You're going through situations that are difficult and hard to go through. You're being prepared. Stop your complaining. That's the lot of every soldier. Every soldier goes to boot camp. Boot camp is not a cruise. It's not, it's not a, uh, a relaxing cruise. Boot camp, they shave your head. You take away your identity. When you're born again, you're supposed to lose yourself in Christ. You're supposed to be dead to yourself. They go to boot camp, and what do they have to do? Get up earlier than they're used to, go to bed later than they're used to, or, or go to bed tired. They work all day. They carry packs. They learn. They train. They fight. They all, all these different things. They're given orders. Do this. Do that. Do this. And after a while, they become a company of men and women. They're no longer individual soldiers. Now they are a group. They're a wheel within a wheel. There are people among the nation, you know, among the nation of Americans, there's a core who are soldiers, military people, airmen, corpsmen. They are the wheel militarily within the nation. So in the same way, Christ is doing something here. He's doing something that's spoken of by the prophets. One of the things spoken of by the prophets, and this is something that many people don't get at all. They've never heard it preached, but God has given me a dispensation of grace to preach the mystery of Christ. The mystery of Christ is being revealed again in these last days because it needs to be. So here's the scripture I just put up there on you for you on the chat. Psalm 22 verses 30 and 31. A seed shall serve him. It will be accounted to the Lord for a generation. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people not yet born. So there's a people that were not yet born, and there's a seed that's going to come, a generation. It's a seed generation. Hallelujah. It's not just one person, like I said. It's not like they used to have in the old days. It's a seed generation. Back in the in days of old, and even now in some places, they'll talk about, you need the mustard seed of faith. I want to tell you, that seed has to be a generation. We've got to be connected to one another. We've got to understand that God is raising up a seed that's going to serve him, and that seed will be a generation of people. It's not going to be a one-man show. No way, Jose. It is going to be a people within a people. It is God's army. It is his remnant that's coming together, and they're being formed now. So whatever you're going through, rejoice. Paul says, I rejoice in tribulation. You rejoice in tribulation, Paul? Yes, because I have not yet attained it. I have not yet achieved it, but I'm pressing on. I want to I wanna get what God got a hold of me for. And saint of God, God didn't save you so you could go to heaven. That's, that's just a little byproduct of being saved. He saved you so you could be in his army. He saved you so he could put things back in order. He saved you so that you could be a part of the generation that fulfills all the prophecies of the Old Testament and makes Jesus return because he must stay in heaven until his enemies become his footstool. There's a work to be done. That seed generation is being formed now. So we've got to look at a few verses together. I'm wrapping up tonight in a few things here. I want you to understand and see, okay? And this is Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 to 16, and then 27 to 29. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. As, as it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs up on a tree or a cross, you know, wood. The bless, that, that, the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So the Gentiles get, come into the body, they get saved, and, and we all receive the Spirit of God, okay? And he says, I speak after the manner of men. Though it may be a man's covenant, yet it is confirmed, and no man disannuls it or adds to it. So he's talking about the last will and testament of Jesus Christ, which is Jew and Gentile become one, and I'm going to do a special work. Now, here it is, 27 and 20. Uh, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He did not say to seeds as of many. He said seed as of one and to thy seed, which is Christ. So as many of you 
as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. This is the mystery of Christ. You know, it's not just Jesus lives inside of you. You have now put him on. You're in him, he's in you, and you wear him. He's like a cloak. You put him on. I bet every one of you had a special jacket or a sweater or something like that or a vest or something that when you put it on, wow, you really felt good. You know you were looking good. Well, when you put on Christ, you are looking the way you're supposed to be looking in Christ. Now, he says, now there's neither Jew nor Greek. There's no bond nor free. There's neither male nor female for all are one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, you see, here's the secret. Here's the mystery. If you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. The promise was made to one seed, one seed, Jesus. But if you're in him, now you're an heir because you're a part of him and you become a corporate body, not just one, a corporate body. He is the head. You become the members of the body. So we see that Jesus is the seed and by faith in him, we are also now Abraham's seed because we're in Christ. Remember the first scripture we looked at? It was Daniel 9, uh, excuse me, Daniel 727. Okay? And here it is. Daniel 727. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people among the saints within the body. The church within the church, the wheel within the wheel, the overcomers within the body, the remnant, the seed generation that's being raised up now to fulfill the promises, to prepare the way of the Lord. Glory to God. We have to understand and see this is what's happening. God is raising up overcomers like the line of Judah himself who will roar out of Zion and who will declare his glory to this generation the generation that is to come. Hallelujah. This is what he's doing. This is what God is doing now. And we have to realize this and understand this. And we have the honor of having this as a part of our destiny. What does this tell us? It's telling us that although the last days are coming, we're in them right now, and tribulation is on the way. Things are getting worse. We are hearing wars and rumors of wars. There's war going on right now, and there's rumors of the big one coming. So we're hearing these things. But God is saying, wait, the end is not coming yet. I'm telling people, somebody said to me, do I need to buy nuclear stuff, you know, in case there's a nuclear war and stuff like that? I said, ah, personally, this is me personally, I don't think so. You know why? Because the big one can't come until Jesus comes back. Hallelujah. The earth is not going to be destroyed until the end of time, the end of the millennium, when there is when it all blows up and then a new heavens and a new earth is created. Hallelujah. So I'm not worrying about World War III, nuclear bombs going up and things like that. I do believe that there's trouble coming. I believe we're going to experience uh, you know, all sorts of problems. I think there's going to be a lack of food, a lack of water. I think our grid's going to go down. I think oil's going to become scarce. Uh, fuel is going to go up to six, seven dollars a gallon. We're going to be in trouble. But in spite of that, just like cream rises to the top of a container of milk, the remnant is going to rise up. The overcomers are going to come over. The people within the people are going to come up. The seed generation is going to declare his righteousness to a people that shall come. That people is here right now. You've been given the opportunity to press in. You've been given the opportunity to become a good soldier for Jesus Christ. You've been given the opportunity to not complain about your circumstances and your situation. You are being prepared to become an overcomer, a people within a people, a part of the John the Baptist company, a part of the overcomers, a member of the seed generation. Daniel says something about this people, and this is very, very important. Although we're going into times of trouble and situations are happening that are going to make a difference in our lives, we are in a position where the people that know their God shall do exploits. Daniel 11.32. Memorize that one. Daniel 11.32. And make up your mind that you're going to be the people. See, it doesn't say everybody who knows their God. It says the people that know their God. They will do exploits. 
So no matter what we see, no matter what's going on, we have to remember Daniel 7.27 tells us that there's going to come a time when God is going to do the things that is, are, that is prophesied by the prophets of the Old Testament and the prophets of the New. And the restoration of all things is going to come. If you want to know more about this, uh, on my website, frankdupray.com, there's a number of teachings on there about the end times, about the apostolic ministry, things that are going on, the restoration, the remnant, things like that. You can read about these things there. And you can also search the archives on the channel and you can find more messages here also. So I want to encourage you to listen, to get ready for God to use you here in these last days because these last days, everything is happening. I pray you have a, a wonderful evening and that tonight's been a good message for you and that you've enjoyed it. And I pray it stirs you up and gives you something to start to think about, all right? God bless you now in Jesus' name. May the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen.